Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today's video is going to be on this knife, which is a collaboration between Boker Plus and custom knife, knife maker Jesper Voxne. And this is based on his Vox F3. Um, so anyhow, it is a titanium uh, frame lock, stainless steel insert, some nice titanium accents um, that have been anodized. And uh, this is the package that it comes in. A uh, little magnetic closure Boker Plus box with the uh, warranty stuff, and then you have a tool for the pivot and the screws. So, anyways, normal format. Um, I will kind of talk about, I'll go over the specs, give my overall impressions, and then I'll get down into the nitty gritty. So, let's jump into it. Um, specs. Overall length on this knife is about 8 inches. Uh, the blade length is about 3.25 inches there, and then the blade thickness is about 0.19 inches. Now this is made out of the blade steel is S30V. Um, Jesper's full customs use CPM 154, but um, I believe this is a first for Boker, at least for Boker Plus using the S30V, um, and it's a huge step from their typical OS8 and VG10, so that's that's pretty awesome. Um, it does have a satin finish. The handle length is 4.75 inches, and the handle thickness in this direction is about 0.56 inches, so um, kind of a nice, chunky, hefty knife. The weight is 6.55 ounces, so uh, again, it's got some heft to it. Opening method is this thumb hole, which is a, kind of a nice oval shape, almost akin to the spider hole, but obviously not infringing upon that copyright. And this is made in China. So, overall impressions. Um, this is actually a really well-made knife. Um, you know, this is my first Boker, and I've been wary of Boker because of their quality control issues, you know, kind of inferior materials based on what's available in the marketplace. And, uh, you know, this is the first one that I finally jumped on. Um, I really like Jesper Voxne's designs. Um, the Vox F3 is a really cool knife. Um, and the the actual size and the specs are, are pretty much identical between this one and his custom. So... You know, the only thing that you're not getting is, um, you know, basically just kind of the, the nice refinement, the nice sculpting, kind of the things that come with a, a custom knife. But what you're also not getting is a very, very limited availability and some crazy price tags. So, you know, it's a little bit of give and take, but um, again, this is well executed, nice and comfortable in the hand, uses a good steel, nice thick stock, um, solid lockup, nice and smooth on the Teflon washers here. Um, you know, there are a few little minute things that could have, that aren't perfect, but again, you know, this is, this is quite a lot coming out of Boker, and, um, again, I, I think that it's a relatively good value, you know, at 160 street, um, for titanium slabs, for a stainless steel lock insert, which I absolutely love, um, again, I think it's a pretty good value, um, it gives you that feel of just kind of that workhorse, knife, um, not really tactical, more of kind of like an overbuilt everyday carry, um, really nice knife. So nice and smooth, not quite Chris Reeve or Spyderco Gale Bradley smooth, but you know, we'll see how it breaks in over time if it gets a little bit smoother and then depending on what uh, lubricants you use too. So anyways, yeah, great knife. So let's get into the nitty gritty. Um, as I mentioned, S30 blade steel um, has a nice kind of clip it blade shape, satin finish. Um, and this thing came razor sharp. I actually have not had a knife this sharp in quite some time. And I don't really do paper cuts, but uh, I thought I would do one for this. Just, I mean, I, I've, I've gotten some knives that were way, way more expensive and they did not slice like that. So, you know, they're taking that relatively thick stock down to a really nice, really aggressive edge. Um, just really well done. Nice and even um, cutting edge on both sides here, no problems. The grind lines are nice and even. The swedge up top is attractive. It is asymmetrical. I don't know if you'll be able to see that in this picture. Again, I mean, this is Boker. I wasn't expecting perfection. I was expecting something well made, and, and it certainly fills that role. So, um, you know, the blade was executed really well. No qualms there. Again, the opening method is this oval here. Not quite as versatile as the Spyderco Spider Hole, um, but it, it works well. It's it's not 
um, as annoying as those rectangle shape holes that uh, your thumb doesn't even go in. So you've got a nice cutout here on the handle so that your thumb can get in there to access it. And then that cutout also serves as a nice way to disengage the knife. So you've got a little bit of traction here, but none of it's sharp. So disengagement um, is really nice. I have no problems with that. Uh, reasonably strong detent. Uh, works well. You know, it keeps the blade in the closed position and it opens it just fine when you, f when you fire it out there. So the handles are bead blasted titanium. Relatively flat, you know, um, but not uncomfortable because they've chamfered all the edges and, uh, you know, did some nice shaping in here too. So that turned out really well. Um, here towards the back spacer, they um, kind of swells up here around the pocket screws. I mean, around the screws. Um, you know, I don't really know if, if that serves any function, but it looks really cool here. Um, and it just kind of shows off the, uh, the really nice back spacer a little bit. So the backspacer does have some sharp corners. I know that someone's going to complain about that. Um, in the hand, you don't feel them. and offers a little bit of traction back there, but uh, those corners are a little bit sharp. The, again, the pocket clip that, and the backspacer, both titanium, both anodized, this nice blue, as you can see. Um, even the lock bar cutout here is um, nicely finished and nicely done. Again, a stainless steel lock insert, just about 40%. Um, a nice solid lockup, no stick whatsoever. So, you know, function function is just fine. Um, really, no qualms there. Now, let's see here. Um, one thing worth noting is that this can go tip up or tip down. When you have it in the tip down position, you'll get a deeper carry than you will when you're going tip up because of the lanyard hole. So, if you like it really deep, just go tip down. Um, if you prefer tip up and you don't mind the lanyard hole, or if you use lanyards, then obviously you go with this configuration. Uh, these days, I'm not really digging the super deep carry. It's just kind of a pain to plot in my pocket sometimes. So I like the little extra that it offers here, um, and I do like it tip up. So that was kind of a win-win for me um, in that regard. It's, it's fairly easy to draw out of the pocket. So, you know, nothing about that. Um, an interesting thing is you've got this massive, massive stop pin back here. And then you've got the cutout and the tang for it to contact the stop pin, but it doesn't really wrap fully around it. It just kind of rests on top, uh, which is a little different than what I've seen lately. So I don't know if that means anything from a mechanical standpoint. The fact that it doesn't wrap it around, I don't know if it's going to distribute force as evenly as one that kind of comes into full contact um, around the stop pin. But anyways, I thought that was an interesting tidbit or something that I noticed. Blade is nicely centered. Um, utilizes almost the entire handle there. Um, comes fairly close to the end, so ratio is good. But um, yeah, overall, I, th I think this was just a, you know, a really well done knife. Um, my only complaint is probably going to be with the pocket clip itself. Um, it's relatively thin piece of titanium. Um, and titanium is a pocket clip. I don't really think it functions as well as stainless steel. It just doesn't have the same strength, or at least not that I've noticed. So if I wanted to, I could take this and I could bend this all the way back with just my first finger. So I think there are going to be a few guys that um, get this snagged, and I think the pocket clip's going to bend up on them. Um, but I think that's really the only complaint that I would personally have is just that this uh, this pocket clip feels a little weak for me. Um, again, it might function perfectly and I'm just kind of bitching about nothing, but uh, we'll see how that how that kind of works out with guys. Um, I'll likely stonewash it. I'm not a typically a huge fan of bead blasting just because it gets so much wear on it. Um, but again, that's something that I can get done without too much trouble. So yeah. So again, for 160 bucks, I think you're getting a lot of bang for the buck here. Um, you know, as, as Jesper was going through the design process, they had a number of prototypes because he kept pointing out things that he wanted done differently or things they could do better. Um, and I don't know how many prototypes they went through, but uh, apparently it took quite a few. Um, and that's really what we need to be seeing from, you know, these collaborations. I mean, you know, Jesper is certainly a world-renowned knife maker. And, um, you know, if he's going to do a collaboration, I'm glad that he took the time and the energy to make sure that it was done right. You know, the, the fact that his logo is on this knife, you know, means something to him. And he didn't let them put out something less than they were capable of doing. And, and I hope we see that from more makers. Um, I know that with CRKT that um, 
Ken Onion has really pushed them to improve their quality of their knives as well. And so, again, I, I hope that's a trend that we see. Um, Boker's done some really cool collaborations this year with some really interesting makers like uh, Ram at Zero Knives, Jeff at Tough Knives. Um, and I hope that those guys continue to push them to um, to do a better job, to make better knives, to use better steel and better materials. I mean, you know, I think that as, a, as an enthusiast, I would rather have something that's made better and I pay a little bit more for it rather than them cutting corners and saving five bucks on a knife. So anyways, yeah, really well done. Great ergonomics, nice and smooth. Um, we'll see how smooth it gets over time. Um, I just think it's a really good value. Um, I know that GP Knives and Blade HQ, they both sold out as soon as they got these things. So I think there's gonna be a lot of interest in this model and hopefully we'll see some variations. Um, who knows, maybe uh, different finishes, maybe carbon fiber on one side, um, a few different things coming out of them in the future if, if, this, if this model is popular enough. Now, um, Jesper also has the Odino coming out with uh, Viper by Technocut at pretty much the same time here. I'm just waiting on that one, so I will be doing a review on that one shortly. And then I'll likely do a comparison between this one and the Odino by Technocut just to, to see the differences. That is kind of an apples to orange comparison, but uh, should be interesting nonetheless. So, anyways, any comments or questions, uh, feel free to let me know. And um, thanks so much for continuing to watch my videos and continuing to support me and subscribe to my channel. And uh, I hope that I can come out with more cool content in the future for you guys. So thanks so much. Take care.